Purdue shot 57% from the field. They win it 80-68. They are in the Elite Eight, one win away from returning to the Final Four for the first time since 1980. So Zach Eady was typically fabulous. Braden Smith, 15 assists and eight rebounds with these 14 points. Lance Jones, 12 points. What a transfer he has been. 32 and four, and once again, a sigh of relief. They are back. As you mentioned, first time in five years into the Elite Eight. Good win for Purdue and to get that separation late and get a double-digit victory. Yeah, I'm happy for Purdue. But for me, it was the fact that they, Zach Eady wore down the Zags the whole game. You know, Graham E.K., he played well. He had 18 and 10, but he had five fouls. Anton, Anton Watson played okay, five fouls. So over the course of the game, he was wearing them down, and then you know, eventually he got to the free throw line. He was doing great. But at the same time, everybody chipped in. Chipped in. You know, Lawyer hit some threes. Braden Smith, he had some good offensive rebounds. He hit some key threes at some points. Lance Jones, he was all over the place. So this was a key effort. Everybody filled the boxes uh, in the stat sheet, so it was a good win. Two great offensive teams. Gonzaga averages 85 a game. Purdue 84. It's like the shootout at the OK Corral. OK? But shooting makes up for multitude of sins. The late great Chuck Daly said that. And uh, Purdue, number one in the country in three-point shooting. Brent, as you know, you're yeah. a scholar of the game. Mm -hmm. You know, they shot nine for 20, 45 percent from the field. They usually shoot 41 percent. Unfortunately, Gonzaga didn't do it. They shot six for 19. So the shooting, the inside game, Roy, as you mentioned, he's a wrecking machine in it. Yeah. He's a giant. How do you play the guy? I mean, uh, it's like guarding you. You were tough to guard. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, well, I wouldn't want to play against you, but no, a great effort. <laughs> Purdue, once again, remember Virginia, okay? My old school. They threw him in the ocean. I still love the school, okay? <laughs> Virginia got beat by UMBC. What happened next year, Brent? National title. What happened to, all right, Purdue? First, you know, Tobin Anderson, friend of mine from Fairleigh Dickens, upset. Mighty Purdue. You never know. Purdue might be on a mission. I'm just trying to say, history repeats itself. They're, they're close to doing it, or at least they're close to being in a position to do it. For much of the season, um, Houston, of course, but Purdue UConn have alternated between the top spot in most human polls and human rankings. And so far in this NCAA tournament, they look with all due respect to everybody else, those two programs look like yep. they're on a collision course for the national championship game. They're not just winning these games to advance. They're beating good teams badly. Yeah, they are. And the thing a year ago at this time, it was, okay, that young backcourt, too many mistakes. And here we are, Braden Smith, 15 assists, gets into double figures. Fletcher Lawyer, big threes. They were 9 of 20 as a team from downtown. But it's the guard play surrounding Zach Eady. To me, that's been the biggest difference, GP. There's no question. A lot of people got caught up on how it ended last season for Purdue. And I, I get it. That's bad. You should never lose to a 16 when you're a one. But it was actually amazing that they were a one seed outright Big Ten champ with two freshman guards, yeah. neither of whom were McDonald's All-Americans, heralded guys like that. Now they're not freshman guards anymore. They're sophomores. And Braden Smith has made a real big leap. He not only is one of uh, the best guards in the Big Ten, he's now established himself as one of the best guards in the entire country. And just to put a button on this, if Zach Eady is going to go out and get 27-14 and then Purdue is going to shoot 45% yeah. from three, forget it. You're not beating them. Good stuff right there for Matt Painter into the Elite Eight. First time five years. Pete, you've been in the Elite Eight. Two sweet 16s as well, man. What's that feeling at that podium after a huge win like this? It's unbelievable. I, I was fortunate uh, at Xavier. We went to the Sweet 16. We played Texas in Dallas. They said it was a neutral site. I wasn't great with geography, but they beat us. <laughs> they were better. Tom Pennis did a great job at Texas. Then when I was at Providence, uh, you know, in 1997, we were fortunate to go to the uh, Sweet 16. We beat Chattanooga, who upset Illinois mm. and Georgia, and we beat them. We went to the Elite Eight. So it's, it's a great feeling. You know, there's less pressure when you get to the Sweet 16. Why? The pressure is the first game. You win the first one, you feel pretty good. You win the second one. So there's a lot more pressure, I think, in the first or second game than in the Sweet 16. So uh, it was a great feeling. I was fortunate. Uh, good players make good coaches. So we're fortunate. But uh, I'm happy for Matt Payne. You know, Mark Few is a great coach. Yeah. I coached against him when I was in Virginia. His second year, my third year, uh, when he was at Gonzaga, they beat us by one in Memphis, right near your hometown, Mississippi. And, uh, you know, he's a, a great offensive coach. 85 points a game. But well, they only had 68 tonight, so credit Purdue. Purdue's a great offensive team, yeah. no question. Right? Second in the country, assists, 19 assists a game, 24 today, as you mentioned before, Braden Smith with 15. But Purdue plays a pretty good defense. I love Braden Smith. 
little feisty guy. He'll yeah. bite you in the, in the ankles. You knock him down, he'll bite you in the sneaker. <laughs> He's feisty. So uh, you know, got to give him some credit. Yeah. I mean, you're the big dog. When you got the rock, you loved the little guy. Yeah, yeah, you get, Hope you, you took him out for a hamburger once in a while. Oh, yeah. You definitely got to you know, appreciate the people that get you exactly. the ball. Exactly. Give him know? the big dog the rock. So yeah. uh, Braden Smith, I love. So great win. For Purdue, I'm happy for him after getting all that grief right. last year, getting knocked off by Philly Dickinson. Well, for me, like, listening to that presser, to me, it was the, the Coach Painter talking about you know keeping the turnovers 13 or less, you know, and that made me just think about the importance of Braden Smith. You know, the last time they had like a, a loss against Wisconsin, it was 76 to 75. They had 15 turnovers that game. That was the last time they lost. But also, Braden Smith in the turnover situation from that is hearing Zach Eady talk about how Braden has been able to set him up, get him the ball. I think about my point guard John Wallace. You should make sure he found me every two, three plays down the down the court. So for me, it was very important to hear that stat and going forward, I'm gonna play attention to those turnovers. Yeah, it was 26 and 0 according to Matt Painter when they commit 13 or fewer turnovers in a game. They only average 10.7 per game on the season. So they don't get above 13 too often, just 9 in this one. So think about what we're dealing with right here. In part because of Zach Eady, but not completely because of Zach Eady. But certainly he's the biggest part of it. This is a top 10 offensive rebounding team in the country mm -hmm. and a top 20 defensive rebounding team in the country. Right. And then they don't turn the ball over either. Right. So that's how they're getting a lot of extra possessions. Right. And you're not getting very many. And so it wasn't the case necessarily in this game, but that has been a real key to their success, limiting turnovers getting offensive rebounds, and creating extra possessions and preventing you from getting them. When you consider a month ago this team was on the bubble, they probably would have signed up for a Sweet 16, no? I would have if I were a Gonzaga fan. This is a great season for them because yep. keep in mind, and Mark touched on this, the expectations for that program have been perhaps out of whack for a little while because of how successful they've been. Mm -hmm. But this was not a preseason top 10 team. This was a team that was outside of the top 50 of the net in January. This is a team that didn't have a quadrant one victory until February. They were very much on the bubble and there were, you know, very smart people who cover this sport who thought that maybe, just maybe, they were going to miss the NCAA tournament for the first time ever under Mark Few. But then they make it. That's 25 straight. Then they advance to the Sweet 16 for the ninth straight NCAA tournament. And they keep these very important nationally relevant streaks alive and head into next season trying to extend them. But given where they ended up, Based on where they were, say in early February, you got to be really happy. Not with losing like this, that always hurts. But when there's a little distance between this moment and, say, uh, the time that it happened, yeah. and you can look back on it and reflect, I think Gonzaga fans and Mark Few as well are going to be happy with how this season turned out. Saw the note there 45 wins for Mark Few in the NCAA tournament, which is just remarkable the consistency over the last couple of decades. They shoot 49%, but it comes in a 12-point loss. 